Hello everyone. In this video we're going to be looking at avalanches. We're going to be studying how they're formed and also some of the effects that they have. Avalanches typically occur in mountainous terrain. Another definition, they're classified as rapid flows of snow down a slope from either natural triggers or human activity. The location where avalanches begin is normally quite predictable. They often occur on steep slopes between 25 and 50 degrees. They normally start above the timberline and they occur in the slopes of the mountain facing away from the prevailing winds, basically in sheltered areas where snow can be built up. These areas are typically quite visible, and as you can see in this photo, uh, they accumulate high concentrations of snow. There are some typical factors that can increase the likelihood of avalanches. Number one, snowstorms and wind direction. Typically speaking, during heavy snowfalls, snow tends to accumulate on the leeward side of the mountain and then when the wind blows across it, it can knock off that snow and it can cause a collapse or an avalanche. Number two, heavy snowfall. The deposits of the snow create an unstable snowpack and precipitation during the summer months is the leading cause of wet snow avalanches. Number three, human activity. In recent years, this is one of the main causes of avalanches. Winter sports put a lot of pressure on the snow and this com combined with deforestation and soil erosion can make um, avalanches far more likely. Number four, vibrational movement. All-terrain vehicles, snowmobiles, or even roads that are found near avalanche locations can destabilize the snowpack and can cause an avalanche. Number five, layers of snow. Typically on a mountain, during the night time, when snow falls, it will accumulate. Then during the daytime, it can melt. And then this process will be repeated. This alternative packing of ice and snow is likely to destabilize the cliffs and possibly cause an avalanche. Number six, steep slopes. Typically, the steeper the slope, the more unstable the cliff face is going to be and the more likely an avalanche is to occur. And lastly, number seven, Warm temperatures can cause melting, and this will destabilize a snowpack and will eventually cause an avalanche. In this image, we can see the seven most likely causes of avalanches. They can be snowstorms, a deep slab movement, a wind slab, wet avalanches, a persistent slab, loose snow, and a cornice fall. In the next diagram, we're going to be looking at avalanches that are formed from deep slab movements or persistent slab movements. In this diagram we can see a mountain, and when the mountain has a 45 degree slope and the wind is blowing from the, the leeward side, snow accumulates on the side that's protected from the wind. Then typically speaking, during uh, the daytime, it melts and it forms a little layer of ice that we can see that um, layers on top of the snow. Then during the nighttime, additional snowfall will gather on top of that layer of ice and will accumulate again. Then what happens is that this alternate colder and warming will create less friction between the two layers and it can also cause a little bit of melting. And this less friction is likely to cause the top layer of the snow to slide off the side of the mountain and therefore creating an avalanche. The base melting also can increase the chances of this as can human activities such as vibrations. Finally, you can see the effects that avalanches have. These are normally three different varieties. Firstly, they're likely to cause damage to life and property. They can obviously cause casualties, they can damage houses, they can wash away roads and damage the infrastructure, and typically a powerful avalanche can even destroy buildings. Number two, avalanches can cause flash floods. Whenever an avalanche occurs, it brings down a lot of debris with it, and this can cause havoc in low-lying areas. Flash floods are seen to happen after avalanches, which is a long-term problem in villages and for townspeople who have to deal with this. And lastly, number three, the economic impact. An avalanche can block many paths and roads and can restrict movement. This can be particularly damaging to various ski resorts that depend on tourism to run a successful business. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like, and if you'd like to see future content, please subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much and have a great day.